Hi guys. Um, thank you for, whoo. Okay. That's better. Thanks for bearing with me. I am about a half an hour late from a problem that I couldn't solve on my phone. However, had I had a 20 year old or frankly an eight year old with me here, I definitely could have solved that problem much quicker, but I didn't. So I apologize. So thanks for hanging in there. And, um, Hopefully, hopefully you find me at some point. Okay, Jody's here. Jody, thank you. Thank you for, for hanging in here because I should have been on a half an hour ago. In any case, let me know if you're watching this live or in replay. My name is Betty Sakosha. I am a independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and the team leader for Power of Positive Inking. Hi, Jackie. Um, I see a few of my team here now as we speak. Um, so I wanted to show you a card tonight. I was, I actually had this all um, ready to go, had all my words ready to go on my screen, but couldn't, whatever, whatever. It doesn't really matter. In any case, here I am. Um, I wanted to talk to you about a stamp set in the brand new annual catalog. Well, I guess it's not brand new at this point, but it's our um, Stampin' Up! annual catalog. So I'm gonna flip you down, talk about the stamp set, and show you a technique. Well, technique, I'll show you a card. Whoops, that's my ceiling. Let's try that again. No. Oh my goodness me. Yikes, it's gonna be a night, boy. Okay. Apologize. I apologize. Okay. No. <laughs> okay. I hope this is working. Got a quick look at my my room there while I was trying to get this going. So let me go and let me know if you are seeing this, if you are seeing it the way you think you should be seeing it. Um, I'm going to mess around a little bit with my, with my stand so that you see less of my stand and more of my stuff in my stand. Um, but just let me know. I see Jackie's here. I see Chris is here. Um, so just let me know if you think you're seeing this the way that you should be seeing this. <laughs> By that, I mean if the orientation is correct. Okay, so let me talk to you about this. Um, this is our annual catalog. If you don't have a copy of this and you would like one, please, um, if you don't have a demonstrator, let me know and I absolutely will get it for you. And if you do have a demonstrator, get in touch with her and she will absolutely get that for you, I'm sure. But this is what I'm talking about here tonight is the Tea Boutique. So you can get everything in the Tea Boutique by hitting this one number here, one, uh, 158670. Um, Chris, everybody's letting me know that this looks the way it should look. So thank you for letting me know. And did I mention thank you for your patience tonight? Um, okay, so this tea boutique has um, come out in the brand new annual catalog or the annual catalog. Like I said, it's not brand new. It's been around for a month. It's almost old news at this point. Um, but what comes with this is this stamp set here. Um, cup of tea along with a bunch of dies that accompany it um, that make it really fun to play around with some some different looks that you can get here. If you go with the T Boutique, um, you know, the the just the one number, one did I mention, 158670, it's $67 and you get the bundle as well as this pack of paper here, which is um, T Paper. <laughs> um, it's six by six tea paper. I probably should have pulled that out, but I'm actually not, I'm not using this paper tonight, so I'm really not focusing on it. Um, that said, that said, <laughs> I should have had it out anyway. In any case, it's six by six paper that's really cute. It's got a bunch of tea stuff on one side and a bunch of more generic stuff Typical of Stampin' Up, they usually do one side that's very um, specific to something, be it flowers or tea or whatever the case may be. And then the other side tends to be a lot more general so that you can use it with a lot of other things. Um, there's nothing better than double-sided paper. That's what I say. Okay, so there's that. And in addition, you also get these um, note cards and envelopes, which are really cool. Like I said, I'm not really using these tonight, so I wasn't really planning on talking about them. Um, but these come in the new in colors. And so these are the cards themselves. These are the cards themselves. Um, 
and then these are the envelopes that go with them. So they're really, um, they are quite pretty and definitely worth having, particularly if you're a tea fan. It's good to see you too, Sandy. I'm sorry I got a slow start here. Okay, so let me get down to work because what I really wanted to show you was what if, what if you're not a tea fan? Hard to believe, I know, because you could put coffee in these as well. Um, and there are some decent flowers in here, but there's a lot of other things that you can do that are not specifically tea um, focused. That's the word I'm looking for. So I wanted to show you, I actually have some other samples that I'll be showing in the next couple of weeks, but tonight in particular, I wanted to show you one dealing with just this little baby right here. Okay, so let me pull out that little baby. This, it's hard to see. <laughs> it's definitely hard to see there. It is a um, slice of citrus. <laughs> so I'm going to call it a lemon because I think that in a cup of tea, probably lemon is what they intended. However, it could be an orange. It could be a grapefruit. It could be a lemon. It could be a lime. It could be... Yeah, I think that's about it. Well, maybe almost could be watermelon, I guess. It doesn't, watermelon doesn't really have those striations, but um, maybe, who knows. So I wanted to show you a card using my Stamparatus this evening, um, made with my lemon or lime, um, and then just basically give you the general um, idea of how to make this card, and then you could go ahead and use this technique moving forward for any card um, that you had a small image for. So I have made this card before. Um, let me pull out the finished card. Here is my finished card. Um, and I made it previously, so I have already marked my, I've marked my paper. So I'm going to show you how and why I did what I did here. So the paper that I'm using for this is... Um, the, the white paper that I'm stamping on, or basic white, I should call it, is um, four inches by three and three quarters. Nope. <laughs> four inches by five and a quarter. I don't even know where that just came from. Um, and when I previously did this, I measured where my, where my uh, citrus slice should go. And I marked it on my, um, on my scrap paper. You can see that here. I stamped it right on here. So if you are going to use a technique like this and you think I might make this card again and again and again, definitely go ahead and, and, and mark your, um, mark your, um, scrap paper here and just keep the sheet because it's going to make your life much easier the next time you need to do this. So what I did was I'm putting my stamp down here. It's going to be exactly in the right position. I should say that I am using um, a photopolymer stamp. The stamp set is photopolymer, which means that it's see-through. There's see-through stamps in here. Um, and because of that, you definitely want to use the added um, foam layer that Stampin' Up! has provided. So this it comes with the Stamparatus. You do not need to use it if you are using... Um, I'm trying... I actually, within reach... I do have one. I have my go-to greetings. So these are red rubber stamps. As you can see here, they call it red. It's not red at all. It is definitely some form of rust. Um, <laughs> red rust stamp sounds awful though, doesn't it? Or rust stamps. Um, but those come with squish. There is a squish layer to these. Let me show you the squish. That is the squish right there. This, this, little white foamy part there or off white foamy part. So when you're using the um, red rubber stamps as Stampin' Up! refers to them, you don't need this layer of squish. But if you don't, if you have a photopolymer stamp, which is what we're using tonight, you definitely want to use this layer of um, foam here. In addition to that, I actually, because <laughs> I love foam, um, I actually cut a layer of, this is just fun foam, I cut to fit right in the corner, so I've got a little bit extra foam layer, too. I actually use this regardless. Even if I use red rubber, um, I use this layer of foam as well. I just, I prefer it. It's not absolutely necessary, but I prefer it. So on the bottom here of your Stamparatus is where the um, magnets are kept. Two magnets come with this. I have wrapped my magnets in... Um, 
uh, painter's tape and it just makes it easier to pull them up because these stick really, really well. Um, and they're sometimes very difficult to get up if you don't do this. Okay, so this paper here, this grid paper is made to fit into your Stamparatus. I've stuck it way over in the corner here um, where it belongs. This is <laughs> where they intend it to be. And I've marked on my paper here where I want to start my card. Now, uh, I'm not going to get into this this evening because um, I am just basically going to show you this, this hinge technique that we're using here. But what I will say is you don't really want to put an image right here up in this corner because the way that the hinge mechanism works, it makes it much more difficult to get a, to get a good image there. Um, so if you have your stamp, so for instance, I have my stamp kind of in the middle here, I'm going to get a much better image than if I have it along either side of my hinge. So that might mean moving your paper so that it's in a spot that is more... Um, makes it easier to move your stamp away from the hinge. Does any of that make sense? Or did that just sound like a foreign language? Perhaps it did. I apologize. Let me know if you have any comments on that. In any case, so I'm putting this over here on this first um, major line here, and I'm sticking it right up against the top, and I'm putting my two magnets down, but not right next to each other. They will snap together and they will break. How do I know that? Because they have snapped together and they have broken. Okay, so for this particular stamp or this particular card, I am using a variety of, I thought that I would make lemons and limes because I feel like it's lemon and lime season. Um, and so I'm using Daffodil Delight, Parakeet Party, and Granny Apple Green. In the olden days, we thought Granny Apple Green was as bright as it got. <laughs> but in the new days, we found out that Parakeet Party is actually equally, if not brighter. So, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start with my first image, which is actually my bottom image. All right, so let me pull in my card. This is the image that I'm actually starting with, believe it or not. So it's the bottom image here that, uh, that I'm going to begin with. So I'm going to do this in parakeet party, and I'm just, um, oh, maybe, maybe this needs to be higher for you to see what I'm doing here. Um, I have a stamp set here. I'll put this upside down. Oh, I don't know if that makes that any easier to see, but here, let's put this under here. Okay. This, it's much easier to ink up an image on your Stamparatus if you've got, um, something that is a little bit thick. So a stamp set case is actually the perfect size to put it at the right height. So it just makes it easier to um, to stamp. So I'm going to stamp this in my, my parakeet party. Pick it up. Oh, I'm happy with that. So I don't have to re-stamp it. My next one is going to be granny apple green. So what I'm going to do now, this is called hinge stamping. And this Let's see if I can show you here. This has hinges that go along the top. Oh, that might be a little too close, eh? Eh? I sound like I'm from Canada. I'm not. Okay. Wish I was some days, but I'm not. Okay. So this here, these are hinges over here that are an, about an inch apart. So I started it in its original position, but now I'm going to pick the, the plate right up and move it into the next hinge. So I basically moved it over an inch. And now I'm gonna do ink this up again. Oh, I should have mentioned that. Um, it is really handy if you have a um, scrubby, what do we call these? Uh, there's a name, it's a cleaning pad. Okay, put a note in if you can remember what we call it, because I'm just having, I'm blanking on that. Okay, now I do want to mention this. I don't know if you can see what I've done here. I have inked that up, but in the process of doing that, I've also gotten some ink over here, right? Because I use my ink pad, which is a large ink pad. If you actually, if you have spots, this works out much easier, but if you don't, you certainly, certainly this will work. Sammy, Sandy is telling me it's called a chamois. She is correct. I don't know why I was blanking on that, but this cleaning thing is called a chamois. You definitely want to have that on hand, and this is why. So in the process of cleaning this, sometimes, oh, I, did, I actually even got more over here. So 
while it won't get on your card, it could get on your magnets, particularly if you have um, kind of the system that I have, which is to have something wrapped around your magnet. If ink gets on there and you go to pick it up and move it, then you now have ink on your hands. And then inevitably, you'll have ink on your card. Again, ask me how I know that. <laughs> Um, I have been a demonstrator for 21 years and I've made a lot of mistakes. So hopefully my mistakes will help you. So you'll make a lot less. So I'm just using my chamois. Thanks, Sandy. Cleaning that off there. I've moved it down one spot and now I'm going to ink it up here. La! So now it's exactly right where I want it, right next to it. Now I'm going to move it over one more spot. And I'm going to pull in, I'm going to clean it first because we've got Granny Apple Green on there. And now I want to add Daffodil Delight. So I'm going to add that on there. Checking to make sure that I don't have any ink on my, um, on, on the rest of the plate here. And I don't, so I'm happy with that. And I'm going to move it over. La! Okay, so now I've got my three slices of citrus going across exactly where I want them. I'm going to move the magnets away and I'm moving this down. I measured the, the height of this and I decided that I wanted my next layer, my next row of citrus to be just above it. So I went down three quarters of an inch. And if you look on your grid paper, your grid paper will tell you, um, I can't see there. There we go. So um, these, the, the grid paper are divided into inches on one side. Pretty sure it's, yeah, and it's metric on the other side. So if inches aren't your thing and metric is, um, you can go ahead and measure in metric as well. So what I'm doing is I'm just moving this down three quarters of an inch. And again, plopping my magnets right where I need them to be to hold my paper where, where I need it to be. And this time I'm going to start with my yellow. Did I say yellow? I meant Daffodil Delight. Okay. Now the other really nice thing about this is let's say I get an image I'm not happy with. I'm happy with that, so I'm not going to change it. But if I were not completely happy with that, I certainly could change it at this point. I could restamp it. I'm sure it will happen in just a minute or so. So I'll have the opportunity to show you. Okay, I just want to make sure I'm going in the right order. So now this is my parakeet party. Um, it's difficult to see off camera, but I just got a real lot of ink all over my plate. So I'm just cleaning that off. That's what that noise is. Pretty, isn't it? <laughs> Some people really hate that noise, so I apologize if, if that's somebody watching. Okay, so I'm going to clean that again, coming in with my Granny Apple Green, and I will ink that up like so. Okay, now this one, I'm going to put words in here, in this layer right in here. So at this point, I'm going to move, the first row was three quarters of an inch down. This one is going to be... Um, an inch and a quarter down, but I've marked it on here. So I marked my first spot, my second spot, my third spot. Like I said, if you're doing a bunch of these, this is a great way. Just keep your paper right in here. Um, or just keep, have your, have your grid paper marked and keep it because it's going to make your, your life easier. Once you've measured this once, it's super easy to move forward from there. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to start with my Granny Apple Green. Oh, do you see all this ink over here? I don't know if you can see that. There's a lot of ink under there. It's not going to get on here, and I can see that it's actually not going to get on my magnet, so I'm not really concerned with it, but um, just be aware. Be cognizant of that, because you don't want to go through all this work and then have a big green splotch there. Okay. Uh, my yellow. By yellow, I mean Daffodil Delight. Big bright yellow. This would also be cute in pink. So I found out, I don't know if you know this, I kind of, I thought pink lemonade was fake. <laughs> like, well, it probably is fake, but um, I didn't think there, I was kidding one day talking about pink lemons. Apparently pink lemons are an actual thing. 
I didn't know that. Um, let me see if I can show you this now. Because this is a huge mess right now. Can you see how much green is it? Now you can see it, right? Um, so I'm going to make sure that this gets cleaned off before I actually stamp. Okay. Um, yeah, so pink lemons are an actual thing. Okay, I am not happy with that. Let me... Whoops, I'm also not happy with the placement of how I'm trying to show you this. Let me show you what the heck I am talking about. I'm trying to zoom. 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 There we go. Okay. Can you see this over here? It's not actually, I, I did not get a good image here. It did not ink up the whole thing by it. I mean, I did not ink up the whole thing. But because I have this and it's a hinge system, it's exactly where it needs to be. I can actually go back and re-ink this. So I'm going to add the green, making sure I'm actually getting the part that was the problem in the first place. And when I go back and I stamp it, it's going to be exactly where I need it to be. So now I've got this beautiful image here. That is the beauty of a stamp. Well, there's a lot of beauties of a stamparatus, but that certainly is one of them. Okay, now, so that's my third row. My fourth row, I'm going to move it down to uh, three quarters of an inch again. And pop that right there. Put this right there. Figure out what color I need first. All right, my parakeet party. Like I said, I'm making kind of a mess of my plate here because I'm using a large ink pad. If you use a spot, our spots are found in our paper pumpkins as well as you can buy them uninked in our catalog. And if you use a spot, it makes this really easy. So if you had a big project that you were doing and you didn't want to have to clean it every time, if you used a spot, um, you'd find it to be a much quicker, easier, less messy process. But you can do it with big, with big ink pegs. Um, I'm not loving how that image came out either, so I'm going to go ahead and re-ink that as well. Now, if you did not use a Stamparatus, there is no way you could do that. So you would just accept it and move on. <laughs> We've done that for years, right? I mean, that's always an option. Just accept it and move on. Okay, and then my last one will be my Daffodil Delight. La! Okay, perfect. Now, I am going to take my chances. And I'm going to just stamp my words here. But you could, if you wanted to, put your words on your Stamparatus and... St oh, maybe I should. Should I? Probably I should. Okay. If I don't, it'll go poor, right? Like, we know how that's going to end. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold my card down like such. I'm going to take my citrus piece off and put it back where it belongs. Have you ever heard that phrase, don't put it down, put it away? <laughs> I should live by that. Okay, um, what I'm going to do now is put, this is just a, um, years ago, Stampin' Up! sold something called Stampin' Majig. You may have that in your stash. Um, if not, if you have any kind of like a window sheet, a firm window sheet is, is a good idea for this. But it allows you to put down your um, piece of plastic so you can actually see where you're stamping and then remove it. So, you, so I can put it down first is what I'm getting at, and then I can remove it to make sure it's exactly where I want it to be. And if it's not, I'm able to fix that problem before I actually stamp on my paper. So I'm using one of my new favorite stamp sets called Go To Greetings. I love it because it's got a lot of different fonts from very fancy to kind of casual to in between, all different sizes. I love it. Okay, so I'm going to do, um, I think, Thinking Of You. This is what I used before, and I liked it. I like the phrase, thinking of you, because uh, I feel like you can use it for anything. So what I'm doing is I'm placing it where I think I want it to go. Like so. I'm going to stamp this. I'm going to push this down here. Now, 
I mentioned this at the beginning. This is a red rubber stamp set, which means that it's got the squish factor already built in, right? This white part here is the squish factor. There's another word for it. I believe they call it foam. I call it squish factor. So as a result, I don't really need this extra piece of foam that, that is provided, right? This is this this is the squish factor. So I don't need that because I already have that. But I'm placing my card exactly back in the corner where I want it to be. I'm putting down my magnet like so. I'm going to ink this up. I think I'm using granny apple green. That's my intent anyway. I'm going to use granny apple green in my words. And then I'm going to stamp like so. Okay. I think that looks pretty good. It's maybe tough to see. This is on plastic, so you can see that it's not really, uh, it's not very distinct here, but I can see that it's straight and it's pretty much lined up where I want it to be, so I'm happy with that. So now I'm going to remove the plastic, just take that away, ink this up again, and then stamp it right like this, and it should be exactly where I want it to be. La! Okay, now, Stampin' Up! provides two plates with their Stamparatus. And you can actually use both plates at, um, you can use both sides of the plate. So I could have put like my lemon on one side of the plate and my words on the other. Um, or I could have used the second plate that, that I can move the hinge along the side here as well. Um, so you can hinge that way, you can hinge left to right, and you can also hinge... Um, north and south. <laughs> Up and down, I guess, is the phrase. Um, so you wouldn't have... To, so basically what I'm saying is if you were making this card and you were making a ton of them, you could have this exactly on one plate and the, and the uh, citrus on the other, and um, you could just make a thousand cards all day. Okay, so that is that. Let me move this out of the way. Let me show you something that you may not be aware of. And that is, in our catalog, we have these, um, they're called For Everything Fancy Sequins. That's the number there, 159187. Um, off the top of my head, I do not know what they cost. I just know that they are priceless. And I'm going to show you why in one second. They are, here we go. Okay, they're on page 141 of the catalog. Right there, you can see them. And they are $15. Okay, well, let me show you these babies. They come, in the past, we've had uh, multiple color sequins, and they were not nearly as beautiful as these. They were nice. I thought they were nice when I knew them, but now that I know these, these are so much better. <gasps> Look at these. Can you see that? So obviously this one is pink, but it's got some gold, some white, just several different kind of shades of pink. Oh, so beautiful. Here's the greens. Greens, again, green has, oh, it's like, I don't know. It's just beautiful. And then here's the blues. Doesn't it look like, I don't know. I don't even know what it looks like. It's just so beautiful. Love it. Okay, so what I'm going to do for this is that I thought I would add a couple of spots of green to my um, thinking of you and just kind of zhuzh it up. So I'm going to use my green glue because I'm a green glue fan. I think I saw Melanie on here today. Melanie, I think, I think so. I'm crazed with my green glue because I do have quite a bit of green glue in my stash. <laughs> The problem is you kind of get to the bottom and you think you can get more out, and usually you can. Um, so I save it and I try and squish out all I can. Okay, look at all the different kinds. Can you see all the different choices here? So many different choices. Blue would be great on snowflake cards, Sandy is saying. You are so right. Snowflake or beach cards. That's the beauty of these. This is the green. Look at, oh my goodness. Okay, I got to... I got to move on here. Okay, so let me take this guy and stick him down here. I'm using my pick a tool. And 
let's see. I kind of like putting on some different shape, guys. Why not? I do what I like, right? Maybe a little bit smaller one. They do come in different sizes. Actually, I'm not sure I like that. So let me take them off and put a regular size sequin here. Um, so the sequins do have some, uh, there's like a top and a bottom to a sequin. I think you probably all know that. If you're crafters, you know. There's a top and a bottom to the sequin. If it ends up upside down, you tell anybody you sent that card to. Yes, this was an upside down sequin card. Um, but there you go. Boom. Done. Okay, so I'm going to apply this whole thing to my um, layer of Granny Apple Green. This is a half a sheet of cardstock cut hamburger fashion, which means it is eight and a half by five and a half. More like a hamburger as opposed to a hot dog. Um, so it's more squat as opposed to long and skinny, which is a hot dog fold. All right. There we go. Little green glue on the back. Green glue is not green. Green glue is white. Just comes in a green container. Okay, now, something that is kind of fun to do is to take your... If you don't have a personalized stamp, um, if you do, certainly, take credit for it and put it on the back for sure. <gasps> Where'd I put it? I lost my lemon. I moved it, and I said, I'm putting it away in a safe spot. Anybody? Anybody see what I do with it? Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Don't know where I put it. But um, that is also a fun thing to... Ooh, my sequins didn't dry yet. It's a fun thing to do is to put that on the back of your card. I can't believe I put this down. See, this is... Th I love photopolymer because you can see through them, but when you put them down and you don't know where you put them... I thought I put it right in this container, but hmm, it's not here. So I guess it doesn't matter. Um... Anyway, you could stamp that right on the back there and then kind of initial it and date it as kind of your signature, which is kind of... I put it on the inside cover. She said, that's what I thought, Sandy, but I don't see it. It's exactly what I thought. Oh, did I put it on the inside cover of this? Nope. Okay. Well, it looks like I'll be spending some time looking for that. Um, if you've been stamping more than about three days, you probably lost a stamp. So you know how that goes. So I'll definitely be looking at that. Did you put it in the words? That, that's what I thought, but it's not there either. I have no idea where I put it, but I'm going to find it. Don't have no fear. I'm going to find it. I'm not leaving this room till I find it. So, but that's a fun thing to do on there as well. Um, another friend of mine had suggested, I think Ellen, and I think she's here tonight, had suggested, what if you pop up one? And I love that idea. So I previously made one. And um, this actually has, look, that's, that one didn't come out good. <laughs> As If you've been watching me for any amount of time, you know, if you check the back of almost any piece of white paper, you're going to find something else that didn't come out right. Um, but the beautiful thing about Stampin' Up! paper is it is thick white paper. And even if it is not considered our thick white paper, we do carry thick white paper. But my point is that I can stamp on this side and it's not going to show through, which is, which is so worth every cent of it, right? So I'm going to put... Which one do I want to pop up? I think the last one. I think the last one here. So um, the, I use the die to cut this out. So it just has like a little dimension, like thinking of you, with just this one little popped up lemon here. Um, but in fact, um, you could cut that yourself because that isn't even tough for fancy cutting, even for fussy cutting, even for me. I'm not a fussy cutter. Don't like it. Um, but I do it when I must. And that actually... Um, would not be tough to fussy cut, but the dies that come with this set actually have a die that cut that out, as well as a die that would cut out um, and give you the illusion of the of the um, the actual um, uh, sections of the lemon or lime. So there we go.
All right. Um, before I flip you over, I just wanted to show you where you would find this Stamparatus in your catalog. So um, the sequins, did I mention the sequins? Okay, I know I did, but I really want you to get them because um, they're going to make you happy. I can guarantee they're going to make you happy. And for $15, it's worth being happy. It's $15 is worth the price of happiness, right? Um, everything f for everything fancy sequins is what they're called. And then the Stamparatus can be found on the page it calls Perfect Placement. I think I've shown you tonight. It is really, really handy for mass producing anything. It sells for $49. Um, it comes with magnets, but they also sell magnets. You do not need to buy the second magnet until you have smashed your first ones. And even then, you probably don't need to. Then you just have extra magnets that are a little bit smaller. The grid paper is very handy to have, and that sells for six fifty as well. Um, and there is a deluxe foam mat, but I'm pretty sure it comes. Oh, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Um, the deluxe foam, I will look into this, and I will put this in the description of this, but I think um, the extra layer of squish that I told you about may be an additional... 650 and if that's the case definitely um would they stick would they stick a whole bunch on sticky tape would they stick would they stick a whole bunch on sticky tape okay i'm not sure what's oh are you asking about the sequin sandy would the sequin stick on sticky tape you could put a bunch on sticky tape and then and then um, pick them up. Is that what you're speaking of? All right. I'm not sure if I am understanding this correctly, but um, let me answer the question. Okay, let's take the pink. Oh, so pretty. So I just have a post-it note. So I am just pulling out a post-it note. Oh, that's smart. <laughs> and can you see them on here? So now I could use, I don't know if this is what my, my friend Sandy was asking, but um, then you could take your pick a tool and actually specifically pick up the ones that you want um, to make a row of beautiful sequins. Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay, I know what you're talking about right now. In fact, um, Okay, okay, I know what you're talking about. This is an added bonus. Well, you're going to be glad you tuned in, I hope. Okay, so I'm actually using tear and tape. Tear and tape is quarter-inch tape. Oh, it's not Sandy. Okay, that's okay, Susan Susan Johnson. Um, it doesn't matter who's asking me. It's a, it's a good question. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to do it this way because I think it's going to be so pretty. And actually, I have an idea. Maybe I'll make something... I have an idea, so I'm going to do it this way. So I'm using my, um, what do we call this? Tear tape. And I'm putting this right across my, um, my cardstock. Now, tear tape, some people will cut it, but in the name, it does say tear. So it definitely tears, um, which is how I generally use it. So I'm just going to fold it around the back. I'm going to take off the front layer here. So this this comes with like a little layer of, uh, I don't know what you call this, like backing or fronting. <laughs> so the case may be, right, because it's not on the back. Okay, I'm just going to fold that around the back. So now I've got this. I'm going to take, okay, I'm going to take this. So this, heads up. I'm not wearing my glasses tonight, that is for sure. No, I do have my glasses on, believe it or not. Um, Stampin' Up! This is a um, powder tray um, it's for embossing powder, but you can put anything in it, right? Anything you want. Um, this was sold a thousand years ago by Stampin' Up! But uh, heads up, might be coming soon. In any case, I just poured these beauties in here. And now I'm just going to take this with my tear tape. So tear tape is really strong. You could also use, oh, 
Okay, you could also use um, a bunch stuck, but I want to fill in all these holes here. You could use our Seal Plus, which is also strong. I just, I, I like this, so I'm using this, but, um, well, as you know, I didn't really prep this part of it because I didn't know I was doing this. Okay, so then I get this beautiful line of, it's very, um, I don't know, like mermaid-esque. I really like it. It looks like, I don't know, just really pretty. I think I have a stamp set with some shells, and I think it would be really pretty to go with that. Um, now I have to make a card with that layer. Thanks, Sandy. I'm going to make a card with this layer, I promise you. I'm definitely going to do that. What One thing I would tell you, though, if you look at this, there are some pearls that are actually in here. Can you see those? So there's like a bunch of sequins that come in a variety of different colors and shapes and sparkliness. But every once in a while you come across a pearl. So I would definitely, I'm going to try and um, flip all those over so my pearls are going, you know, face up, face up. So <laughs> Susan's glad she asked. I'm not sure I'm glad, glad she asked because now i got another job ahead of me. But I absolutely will do that. I absolutely will do that. And um, did I mention how much I love these sequins for all occasions. Okay, so that's that. Let me flip you down. Chat for a second. See if there's anything else that I can answer for you. And okay, so, so that was um, a stamp apparatus and how to use it and how to use a tea set with no tea involved, right? Like I kind of feel like it's a really good, um, as I mentioned, I feel like it's a good summer set or summer card because it's got, you know, like summery things kind of remind you of lemonade or margaritas or whatever, whatever for the summer. Um, so that's in the um, cup of tea. But I also thought um, I went through my stash of cards to see what other cards I could make a very similar card with um, without having to change a whole lot. So I was looking for an image that was approximately the same size that I could use um, going across several times and then down several times. If you have a larger image, you might need to use the hinge. You might need to, um, like, rather than use it every step, maybe every other step. So if you had a card that was in the horizontal position as opposed to the vertical, or if you're using a slimline card, you could do the long way. Um, and you maybe every every other hinge, if your image was that big. Um, the other thing that you can do is mark your paper so that you move it so that um, by moving the hinge, it comes out to the right size. I, I can tell already just by hearing myself say this, that I'm not actually making that all that clear. But if you go back and watch this video and start playing around with your stamps, you'll see what I'm talking about. But... A couple of other images that that would definitely work with are the cookies from the Nothing's Better Than, as well as the coffee cup, which is also the same size. The um, the tropical drink cup, the Mai Tai cup, if you will, is a little bit taller, but you certainly it's certainly the same width, so you could do that across a page as well. Chocolates are a little bit wide, but they're the same height, so you could stack them up as well. And then this new beautiful set called Simply Fabulous. I have really, um, it's a very, very kind of basic, fun, bright, happy set. Um, and there's a bunch of small images of flowers on here. And I'm, I'm definitely going to play around with that and see what I can come up with because I think it's going to be great for this, for this technique as well. Okay, so um, thanks for tuning in. If there's anything that you need, please reach out to me if I'm your demonstrator. If I'm not your demonstrator, reach out to them and they definitely will help you out. Um, leave me a question. Let me know if you have any, uh, or leave me a question. Leave me a comment if you have any questions and I'd be happy to answer them for you. I will not be on next Tuesday night, which is when I'm generally on, um, as I have a previous engagement with a stamp club, but I will be on at some point next week, so just kind of stay tuned and um, take a look, and then you can always watch on the replay at your convenience, all right? Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it, guys, and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.